Hello everyone! Welcome back to Wing Leader Flight Training with me, Evil Dr. Ganymede. We're continuing with the birthday present scenario uh, and we're actually skipping forward a bit. We ended the previous episode at the end of turn two and uh, now we're starting at the, the beginning of turn four. So what's happened in the meantime is that there were no tallies. The bombers and the sweep up here moved two squares forward as they normally do. And the P-40s down here moved just up one and across one. And the vectors you'll notice have also moved because in the administration phase at the end of the turn, if the planes are under GCI control they can roll to reassign their vectors because they were basically heading up here when the bombers are moving past them so there's not much point in them just carrying on there they want to reassign things so that they can head to a new place where the bombers are headed and hopefully intercept them there you have to roll equal to or above the GCI rating and they did that for both vectors so they've moved so these guys if they don't tally the bombers at this point, they'll be turning around and heading towards vector A and B here. The flights at the back here were broken already at the end of turn two, so they just moved away in turn three in different directions, and then they escaped. They're not in the game anymore. So now, hopefully, somebody is going to get a tally this time. Uh, it all depends on the vagaries of the dice roll, but they're, they're now about as close as they're going to get. So we can just get straight into that and then see what happens from there. So we go straight to the tallying phase and the only raiders that can attempt to tally are the Hayabusa's up here who are still completely clueless. They're going to try and tally the, the B flight down here which is one, two, three squares away and they don't get any radio calls or anything because they're not on the radio. They are veterans though, these guys, so they'll get a plus one. That is it. So they get a plus one on their roll. Target is three squares away. And they're still oblivious. <laughs> like, modified roll of three. That is not higher than three squares. So, great. They're completely clueless. Chinese squadrons are now going to try and tally now, this is an interesting choice here that I want to dwell on a little. So, which one of these should they try to tally? Now, think about where these are going to be moving in the movement phase. These guys will be moving to forward, over to here. If the B flight here tallies the rear bomber squadron, then in the movement phase, once that bomber's moved, they can just go up like this and they'll be in that square and ready to attack in the combat phase of this turn. If they tally the front one, then they have to do the same thing because their climb rating is three. This is their entire move. So they're going to end up either in this square, the right way up, obviously, having tallied the squadron at the front, but they can't attack them yet because they're not in the same square. Or they can tally the Y squadron here and attack them immediately. So which one would be better? Well, on the one hand, they've got an opportunity now to do an attack because, you know, these guys still haven't spotted them. So they can at least get an attack in without having any sweeps interfering with it. Because if they'd spotted them, they would be down in here as well. But if we actually had a look at all the, the numbers here, it's actually better for them to tally these guys because when they're climbing up here, they're losing one speed. So they're at a disadvantage and they're also a flight and they're also green. So all the disadvantages are compounding here and they would actually end up with, if I've calculated this correctly, a minus one differential. The P-40s would actually be rolling on the worst column. The bombers would be rolling on the plus one column. So that wouldn't be good. Whereas if they actually held off 
and tallied the X squadron and the front, then next turn they don't have this climb on them because they wouldn't have moved to a higher altitude. They'd still be flying level here. So the climb penalty is gone. And that means that the differential between them in terms of the air combat would be zero. And if they go into that as a speed combat, which is the smart thing to do here, then the bombers don't get any bonuses there. If they went into it as a turn combat, the bombers would get a plus two to their defense because it's a turning fight. And that is huge because increasing their defense by plus two is effectively the same as going from like a zero column, which they would be rolling on if it was a speed fight, to them rolling on a plus three or a plus four even. You're adding two to the dice. So a five now becomes a seven the defense bonus that they get because it's turning fight is huge. You really don't want to do that. So the best thing to do really in this situation is for these guys to to try and tally the front squadron and then wait till next turn and then they can get into a speed combat with them when they catch up and that's about as good as it's going to get with them. Now Another side to this as well is these are a flight and they're green. So being green gives them a minus one on their combat speed for their combat turn. And being a flight gives them a minus one on their combat speed and combat turn as well. So it's a, it's a really bad combination, really. So I guess next time I try this scenario, I, just in general, don't give the green pilots to the flights because it's really compounding the disadvantages on them. If this was even just a squadron without veteran or green, they'd be in a much better situation because they wouldn't get those penalties on the combat speed and turn. That would make the differential, obviously, that give it a plus two. So, you know, they'd be at a much better position relative to the bombers. So it, it's interesting where the decisions are here now because, you know, it's often said that Wing leader doesn't have an awful lot of decisions to be made, but in this particular instance, there's some consequential decisions here. And it also depends on, do you want to rush into a fight here? And if you rush into a fight, you're going to basically screw yourself up. But at least you get you know, the combat done in this turn. But if you can wait, it's going to be better. And ideally, if the P-40 could actually go up one and then dive into the square that the bombers are in, then that would be even better because then they'll be diving and they'll be coming out of the sun as well, which would also help. But the problem is, in this specific scenario, there is a scenario rule that says that the P-40Bs cannot go above altitude 11 because they don't have oxygen masks. So, really what happens next just depends on what the dice say. So we've already established that the sweeps up here aren't tallying us. So we've got to see what we want to do down here. So P-40B is going to attempt to tally Sally X at the front. And to do that, they have a modifier of plus one because they're on a radio call, because they're on the GCI. But they have a minus one because they're green. And that's it. So actually, it's a zero modifier because their target is not in the sun. Their target is directly above them. Y actually is in the sun. So that would be actually harder to tally. So there's no modifier to the roll. They just have to get higher than a one. And they just get that. So good. They have a two. They have a tally on X. So now A can try and tally Y and they are two squares away, but they are on a radio call. They are a veteran, so that's plus two. And the target is not in the sun because they're directly above, but the P40s are in the wispy cloud. So that's gonna be a minus one. So they've got a plus one to their roll. They roll a three, which is uh, enough. So they have a tally on them finally. Okay. Be interesting to see how long these guys remain completely clueless. Because there's no radio net here. So nobody is telling them that, hey, we're under attack. So this bomber is going to move forward. And then these guys 
are going to do their 135 degree turn and come up one and that's going to use up all their movement because the climb rating of the P40Bs, if we have a look, is 3 at this altitude. So that's all of their movement. Then Y is going to move the other bomber and they're going to move forward too. Now they're in the same square but because these guys have got a tally on the bombers in front of them they're essentially they're coexisting in the same square even though they're enemies. And remember these squares are quite big they're like a thousand feet altitude. Now these guys will move so again they don't have much choice they have to climb so again they're going to do this 135 degree move and flip around and then next turn they'll be able to climb up into at least this level. I mean these guys will be a bit further ahead but they'll be able to catch up with them eventually. And then the unalerted fighters who are still these guys will continue to obliviously move forward. So now we don't have a combat because these guys are tallying the front bombers, not these ones. So that's basically it. We're at the end of the movement and the end of the turn because nothing happens in the admin phase either. So a bit of a lengthy explanation there, but it shows that what you really want to do is maximize the the favorable modifiers for your side attacking y here would be just not ideal especially when we've got a, a green flight that is you know they're not good in the first place you want to try and get the best possible results you know dice notwithstanding the dice can still roll a two and you know fail miserably no matter what but it's still better to go for the optimal result really